what's good people we're back with another video um another study video and uh, basically i'm still revising for the prescribing exam and it's just getting imminently closer the plan is today i'm going to do my first mock exam do the whole thing just to test myself see where i'm sitting um, yeah So in the meantime, um, I have this like top man gift card, right? Let's pull it out. So this, which wasn't a gift, but I went to return something like ages ago. Then I lost this card, which has 30 pounds in it. I don't want to lose this again. So I'm going to go and try and spend it. So I'm going to do that before I go to do some work, really. As you can see, it is very crowded right now, so let's just spin to where we're going. Okay. I think uh, that's what we're going to go for, so let's just uh, take this. Alright, sick. So, we've done one job now. One job out of the task list is done. To be honest, I might work first and then get lunch. We're just gonna have to see. It's raining at the moment, so let's spin to where we're indoors so this camera doesn't get all wet in there. So. Alright. We're in uni now and I need to find like a, a nice little little space to work in. So I'm gonna pick up a key to one of the rooms. Hello. Hi, I'd like to, is, is there like a key I can pick up for one of the rooms? Is there any free room today? Okay, so before moving on to the next segment of the video, I just want to tell you about something that I found extremely useful for my general learning and also happens to be the sponsor of today's video, which is The New Scientist. Now, as a medical student, I rarely have any time over to go out of my way and do some extra reading or research into interesting topics, especially when they're not kind of medically related specifically. But The New Scientist makes this a bit easier. So they are a, a science and technology magazine and there are articles and publish weekly on a huge array of different topics from also medicine, science, technology, archaeology, geology, psychology, topics across the board. Now, I also get questions sometimes on Instagram or on YouTube comments. How can I improve my application to university? Or the university might say, you know, do some extra reading around the topic that you're applying to. So having something like the New Scientist give you access to articles that you're interested in can make it much easier in interviews and also in terms of writing 
uh, your personal statement. Now I was doing some of my own reading and I wanted to read something that was you know, not medicine. Uh, and I found this article which was titled Finding Sahul, which was quite interesting. And it's to do with how the ancient humans, so about 50 to 70,000 years ago, migrated from the Southeastern Asian region to the continent of Sahul. Now the ancient continent of Sahul is the same continent that we now know as Australia, but over kind of the last 50 to 70,000 years, uh, you've had kind of uh, the melting of ice, which has led to increases in sea levels and also therefore covered a lot of the land that you used to be able to kind of see of Australia. So Australia is actually quite a bit smaller now than it was 50,000 years ago. And now the question is, you know, around 50 to 70,000 years ago, humans hadn't evolved uh, technologically in order to be able to get you know across the sea from the southeastern region to Australia or Sahul. Now this article goes through the pertinent questions around this topic. What time period, what does the evidence show? Was it an accidental crossing? Was there some type of tsunami that washed over loads of people? Or was it a planned migration? Trying to address those questions as much as we can. Obviously at the moment this is archaeologically still a research question we're trying to address but it goes through you know what does the current evidence show now moving on from that there's also a map attached to the article which shows the potential routes that could have been taken you know there's a northern route that could have been taken into uh, the australian continent but also there's a southern route i would say that was quite interesting to read for me anyway it wasn't so kind of complex and technical that it went over over my head completely you know i'm not an archaeologist but at the same time it was in you know sufficient detail and depth for me to at least grasp the overarching concepts around this topic now if you're interested in this then use the link below in the description to get an exclusive offer of 10 weeks of the new scientist magazine delivered to your doorstep weekly for just 10 pounds and also you get access to the online version of the magazine the live talks and workshops the app and the online version of the article specifically and access to newscientist.com and that's all for £10. Alright, so I've just signed up to the PSA or the Prescribing Safety Assessment website, which has the official mocks. And it says here that the first or the actual mock that I'm going to do now uh, is going to take an hour to do with like 30 questions. So highlighted it there uh, and the actual exam is going to take about two hours with 60 questions so my mentality or my kind of uh, my mindset approaching this now is that I'm just gonna plunge myself into it you know I'd, I don't think it's gonna go great in fact I think it's probably gonna go really bad but you, j you just have to do it so far I'd only done the book which has passed the PSA and although that's been useful in giving like some information about the stuff that you might need to know once you've done it, you don't really know where you're sitting. And there is much more, I think, to the exam than just knowing a few kind of facts. You need to know how to use the interface, being able to search the BNF for medications and side effects, being used to the type of questions they are. So you never really know until you've done an official mock. The aim of this is not really to teach myself the content or get good at it right now, it's to see where I'm at. Where's my baseline? Where do I need to move that baseline to? You've got to accept some L's at the start in order to get the wins at the end. You get what I'm saying? Come on, them ones there. All right, okay, so I've just finished the we just finished the mark. Uh, yeah, we finished it on time. I think that's a good thing. So I'm not, uh, I'm not concerned about timing and stuff. Uh, but obviously, as expected, you know, um, I wasn't expecting great results. This is bearing in mind, you know, I've done barely any work for this, and I've got four weeks left, which means I think um, I feel, I feel now a bit more reassured. I feel like I'm in a comfortable position. So uh, it was out of a hundred, so you can see there. Let's see if you can see that. So, so the pass mark is 63%. I got 55%. Although when you look at it directly, the percentage itself is a shambles, yeah. Uh, but in the context of what I've done so far, 
because I've, I've, I've barely worked on this at all. I haven't even gone through the lectures that we were taught about this. And uh, this is the first mark and I've got four weeks left. Alhamdulillah, like uh, I, feel, I feel good about this. So the strategy from here onwards is going to be to cover all the content. I'm going to cover all the lectures. I'm then going to do a few other practice questions. I'm going to go through the book again and hopefully slowly 10% a week. If, if, we bring up, if we bring up the percentage 10% a week, Hopefully should be should be hit, hitting the 80s comfortably. So yeah, now I need to munch a bit. That's the end of the day. If you like the video, then like the video. Comment, like, subscribe. If you want to sign up to um, the New Scientist magazine, use the link below for £10 for 10 weeks of magazines, which is actually pretty sick. So yeah, safe.